So this is a video, <coughs> excuse me, it's a video on the um, transformations. So the idea is that um, using the discussion and also just your own study, you're getting to know the parent functions, which if you remember were y equals x, <coughs> y equals x squared, y equals absolute value of x, y equals square root of x, y equals 1 over x, y equals 1 over x squared, uh, y equals the cube root of x. Let's see, that's 6, 7. What am I missing? Um, y equals x cubed. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And the step function, which is y equals the ceiling function. Okay? So those are the parent functions that basically kind of uh, represent the different family of functions. And so... You should be at this point trying to get to know those equations and their graphs better. And that's part of the purpose of that um, discussion that you've been taking part of that closes later tonight. I'm filming this on Friday afternoon. Um, so, so the idea is we get to go know these really well. And then when we see something like, for example, y equals x plus 2 squared minus 5 with a little negative out front, we recognize this function as being in the y equals x squared family. So what that means is that it is some series of transformations, or the graph of this is some series of transformations um, done onto the graph of y equals x squared. So by knowing y, x, y equals x squared really well, we therefore can easily come up with the graph of this thing. So what I've put up here is a summary of all the transformations that can happen. And uh, of course you have to understand the grid, but once you understand the grid, I think this, this picture that you're looking at right now really kind of summarizes what can happen to the different, um, like what you do in, in the equation and how it affects the graph. So um, the outside stuff here, the, uh, the add, multiply, sign, inside, outside, those are all things that are describing what's happening in the equation. And then the stuff on the inside is describing the transformations that take place that are applied to the parent function to get the new function. Okay, so notice inside and outside are those are important things to understand. So for example, um, basically what inside means is is, is the thing that we're doing, the adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, is it happening inside the function or outside the function? And by inside, we mean um, the main thing that's happening in that parent function. So for example, y equals x squared, the main thing is, is squared. So if you look at this example here, um, the plus 2 is happening inside the function. The minus 5 and the negative, and that was a very big negative, are happening outside the function. Because if you think of order of operations, first thing I would do to x is add 2 to it, then I would square it. So that means 2 is inside because it's happening before you square it. And then after you've squared it, you would apply the minus 5, or you'd apply the negative and the minus 5. So, um, and each, of course, each function has its own little nuance of what's inside and outside. So the key is, if you can determine inside and outside, and I'll have another video kind of working that out more. But so the idea is, if if you're um, if you notice how the grid works, this says if we're talking about this area right here, the green area. If you are this is come this happens this horizontal shift happens when you are adding on the inside of the function. By horizontal that means right and left, and shift means it's just sliding or moving. Okay, so, so in other words, the shape of the graph is going to stay the same, but it's just every point is being moved the same distance either to the right or to the left. So for example, um, we do some examples over here. Here's an example of the green one. That 2 is being added on the inside, so that means it's going to shift it horizontally 2. Now, <clears throat> one other thing to pay attention in this case is, it's a little bit tricky, when you're doing things on the inside, they kind of happen opposite what you think. So I'm going to put a little word opposite in here to remind you of that. Meaning that if you add to, we usually think of adding as going to the right. 
But if you add 2 on the inside to an equation, what's going to happen to the graph is it's going to move it to the left 2. So adding 2 on the inside moves it to the left. Subtracting 2 or adding a negative um, means it's moving to the right. By the way, I have the word add here, but in my mindset, add and subtract are in the same category because subtraction is just adding the opposite. So this add, by add I mean adding or subtracting. Okay? Okay, the next box in the grid is um, adding on the outside, and you can see what that does is it produces a vertical shift. So, and here's an example of that. If we, um, this is clearly the minus 3 is happening outside of the squared, so I would square the x first and then subtract 3 from it. So in this case, um, this would be a vertical shift. So this would take the normal y equals x squared function, the graph of it, and it'd move every point down 3. Because on the vertical shifts, it happens, it, the opposite effect isn't, a, isn't a, um, applied. Okay, so the opposite idea is only happening in the inside column. All right, moving right along. Again, on the inside, we'll just use general green for inside. <laughs> just because that's fun. And so in this case, we're looking at what happens if I multiply on the inside. And so here's an example of, well, in this case, it's dividing, but it's kind of the same idea. Multiplication and division are in the same category. Dividing is just multiplying by the um, reciprocal, right? So here's a case of um, dividing or multiplying by one half on the inside. And again, what that will produce is, summed up here in the green, horizontal stretch. So by stretch, I mean that we're pulling things away as opposed to shifting things. So um, you're going to change the shape of the graph. It'll get skinnier or fatter or, you know, it'll have, it'll have effect on the shape. The shifts have no effect on the shape of the graph. It just moves them. The horizontal stretch or both stretches will um, pull points away from something. So in a horizontal stretch, what I'm doing is every point is getting further away or closer to the Y axis. And there's also the little thing that I mentioned, the um, we'll call it reciprocal. Whoops, I need a dark color here so it actually shows up. Reciprocal. So in other words, you notice here I'm dividing by two or I'm multiplying by one half on the inside. That would produce a stretch by a factor of two. So it's actually going to make it twice as long. So that's what we mean by reciprocal. What you see happening on the inside has the reciprocal effect in, on the graph. So multiplying by one half would actually stretch it by a factor of two. And again, we're stretching every point twice as far away from the y-axis. Okay. Alrighty then. Let's do this. So then the next example is this vertical stretch. And there's an example there. Notice I'm multiplying on the outside. So this three is being multiplied on the outside because I would square the X first and then multiply by 3. So that's going to produce a vertical stretch, and it um, does not have the reciprocal effect. So uh, this is going to make everything three times as far away from the x-axis, because it's a vertical shift, so you're stretching away from the x-axis. And if we keep going in a like manner, uh, what was I using green? So down here, now we're having a sign change on the inside, which um, that is represented right here. Notice the negative x is inside the squaring. Um, so that would be happening on the inside. And this is telling me that it's going to reflect across the y-axis. So if you remember reflections, basically they go to the exact opposite side of the line of reflection, but the same distance away. So the points that are above the y-axis are going to appear, up, appear below the y-axis. And the points that are below the y-axis will appear above the y-axis. Okay. And finally, uh, this lax box is there's a sign change on the outside, and that would be represented here. There's one example of it. So, um, and it produces a reflection across the x-axis. So, the, key, the one thing to keep in mind is all the green things notice affect the x-coordinate, and all the purple things affect the y-coordinate. 
Because if you move to the right or left, that's not going to change the y coordinate. It'll only change the x coordinates of all the points. Uh, same way with reflecting across the y axis. If I reflect across the y axis, notice I stay the same level as far as the y's are concerned, but I'm going to the opposite x value. So those are some things to keep in mind. Uh, I think I'll end the the uh, video here because I I'll make another video showing you some more examples of this and actually how it plays out in the graph.